Welcome to Actual Skill Modeling. This is part 12 of AMT Star Trek Next Generation Enterprise D. Scale is 1 to 1400. In the last part I built the, the hull. This part I'm going to be concentrating on the warp nacelles. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. Before I get to the warp nacelles, I'm just going to be fitting the neck onto the saucer section. As you can see there it comes in two halves. I'm just fitting the first half now. And already I can tell there's a little bit of gapping issues. Now there is meant to be a little ridge line in between this part and the saucer section because the saucer section does come away um, as the unit on its own. But there's probably going to be a little bit of light blade because of that. So I will fill in this uh, section. Itself would be too difficult to make up uh, on its own uh, unit as a modular unit. So it's better to place it onto the saucer section one part at a time. Wait until it's dried or almost dry. So you've got enough room to maneuver for the parts if necessary. I, I found it helpful to um, clamp the bottom of the neck just when I'm putting the clamp there now. Um, but then just holding it in position for a little while until the glue sets. It's quite an awkward shape to get um, everything into alignment. So I'm using Vlajo Plastic Putty once more and I'm just putting a bead right around where you can see the crease mark. Once I was dry and sanded back, I noticed the, the Vlajo Putty shrunk a little bit and inside the gap. So I'm just uh, topping that off with a little bit of sprue glue to level everything out. And once that's dry, it's just a re-sanding to uh, level it up. Now, because I've um, put the filler and had to sand it, obviously, I'm going to be re-priming this. But before I do that, I'm just masking off the areas where um, the paint, the primer will get into the actual inside of the ship, which I wouldn't want. So I'm just putting masking tape around those little areas. The first thing I'm going to be doing is painting the cells. So for the main base colour, I'm going to be using Humbro 248RLM78 Humbro Blue. Now this is the one of the railway colours by Humbro, and this is the closest I've got to Dockhead Blue. I don't want to mix any colours up on this model if I can help it. So this is what I'm going to be using for my base colour. Then it's on to Revel Up Colour 83 Ross for uh, this part here that sits just behind the buzzards. And once it's dry, I'm going over that with Revel Up Colour 730 Clear Orange. This is uh, just to change the colour slightly because the rust was a little bit too dark. But um, I wanted a transparent colour to go over the top of whatever I was placing on anyway to give it that glassy look. On to lightening up the nacelles now. There's a couple of ways I can do this, and I did play around with um, various um, diode lights and uh, as well as the strip lighting, and, uh, and I came up with a combination of both. But before I put them in permanently, I'm just dry fitting uh, these lights to see how well they, they fit in. They're going on the upper section of the, of the nacelle. The lower section, there was too much plastic to remove for them to get set flat. So um, that's what I've decided to do. Now what you see here is two pre-wired light diodes. So I've got a 3mm red one and a 3mm blue one. Now if you're not sure how these are wired up, um, if you look back into uh, the earlier part of this build, you'll see me uh, wiring up some uh, LEDs. I, of course, I, I could have included them in here, but I've shown them so many times to this point that um, I thought I would leave them out. So as you see, I'm doing my light test there to make sure that both are working. And what I'm looking at here is making sure that um, the blue is not encroaching onto the red. So I've added uh, some more lights on. And again, these are 3 millimeter blue diode lights and again this is just to test out to see how well everything is working and I think there's too many blue LEDs in there I put um, a little bit too many diodes in so I've um, taken a couple off and uh, this is what I've came up with so you've got the LED strip light 
connected to the uh, light diodes. The red one is for the buzzard collector. Uh, the blue ones are just to give it an extra bit of uh, illumination. And at the very end, just with my glue carriers, there's a flashing white one going on. But that's only going to be a pinprick of light uh, coming from that one. So now I'm just putting everything in place and uh, securing everything down with my hot gun, hot glue gun. I've been asked if it's possible to make a separate video concerning the lighting, how, how they uh, go together, the basic wiring process uh, and things like that. So um, if you're watching this and that video is already up and you're not sure how these go together, go and have a look at that video. If you're watching this um, and it's not up yet, it's going to be up very, very soon. Uh, that will be the next project that I'll be doing. So I'll probably comment after I built the Enterprise D. So I'll either make a brand new video of it or uh, I may use some um, discarded footage, footage that, um, uh, from this video. Um, I'll just see how it goes. Uh, but anyway, back to, the, to this build. Uh, as you can see, both are almost done now. Uh, the, the, the glue, again, is just helping to keep everything in place. It's important to isolate all the bare wires. I keep on saying it, but it is worth repeating constantly. The hot glue on the um, light itself, try not to get too much on the bulb. It shouldn't really affect it, but just in case. So I always try and put it just where the resistor area is on the diode. diode. That, that way it should be enough to hold the diode in place and not affect the actual bulb itself. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm placing a bit of tape in between the white flashing light and the blue diode light. This is just to stop paint bleed. I will also be uh, putting uh, some insulating tape over it as well, um, so that the, the different colour lights are not going to be bleeding into each other. And this is where I'll end the video, so it's quite a short video this time around. Uh, that's mainly because I've cut out a lot of the wiring of the uh, lights. As you can see there, I'm just doing my, my light test. With that flicker off and off, that's just uh, the crocodile clip on the um, part of the connector just slipping off. The, the lights themselves are absolutely fine. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds? If you subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to date, not only with this build, but all my future builds, of course. Hit that like button. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. And, of course, you can share the video. So, once again, keep an eye out for the um, extra video I'm going to do on lighting. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.